Hello there, welcome to Mind Boggles. Hope you enjoyed uh, the other shows you've seen perhaps with uh, how to direct your mind, how to calm the mind, or the things we've talked about. Today we're going to talk about the two powers of mind. And you can make an argument for a lot more, but over the years, as a hypnotherapist for many, many years, I got it down to basically two different powers our mind has. Before we begin though, I want to suggest to you a way to study this kind of stuff is to take the position you have a mind to use, but you are not your mind. You just have a mind. And sometimes our mind gets us in trouble because it's, it's, it's allowed to run loose and create all kinds of mischief, right? Notice sometimes you're trying to do something right, but there's the other thoughts going on that louses things up. Well, we're going to talk today about the two powers of mind, which might give you a little leverage of uh, how you can use your mind a little more gracefully to accomplish your goals rather than allow your mind to sabotage you behind the scenes, okay? So the two powers of mind I want to argue uh, for today is that we have the power to give attention and the power to withdraw attention. For example, right now, while you're watching mind boggles, you might be making yourself comfortable, relaxing your jaw, slowing your breathing as you begin to relax and enjoy the show. Uh, so your attention for the moment is focused maybe on the television screen. But then all of a sudden the phone rings, your, whew, your attention goes that direction. You're sitting there, things are good, and you think, well, popcorn would be kind of good. And then bam, you're up making popcorn. All these thoughts coming in all the time. Uh, and we have the ability, if we practice, to give attention to them or let them go past without paying any attention. Right? But essentially our mind will give attention to something and withdraw attention. Let's say you, uh, you love to bowl and you had a hard day at work, you're absolutely whipped. You just make it through the door, you collapse on the couch, you're exhausted, and you can't believe how tiring the day was. And a friend calls up and says, hey, how about we go bowling today? Bam, you're out the door, energy's gone, back in, you're running and rolling. You give attention to fatigue, you feel the fatigue dramatically. All of a sudden you shift your attention to bowling, which you love, energy comes back, does it not? So our mind very obviously can give and withdraw attention. That's not much of an argument. The next one is a little more complex and difficult to work with. In fact, if you really think about this in depth, this is gonna take you a few years to get this one. The mind has the power to give and withdraw value, right? Give and withdraw value. Let me explain that. Look around the room, wherever you are, wherever you're living, and notice nothing you see in the room. Nothing has value in and of itself. It's just stuff. It's tile, it's carpets, it's furniture, it's just stuff. And it's all made out of dirt, mostly. But notice it's just stuff. It has, of itself, no intrinsic value. We create the value for all of it. Stay with me. Let's say uh, there's a dozen of us, we go down to the ocean. Right? We're sitting there looking out the ocean and somebody says, wow, what a beautiful ocean. The next person had a, a friend drown. That ocean's dangerous. The next person's a surfer. Boy, I hope the waves are up. Next person's a scuba diver. Man, I hope the waves are down. Next person's a fisherman. There's money out there. We have 12 people. We have 12 different values of the ocean. With me? We create the, the value. The ocean is just doing oceanness. It has no value, zero. We bring the value to the experience. We are the ones who hallucinate the value, if you want to use that word, but we create it. This is tough to keep in mind. When I assign value to things, I unconsciously assume they have value. No. Or he or she, no. I create the value for the experience. Example, uh, my wife Sheila and I were doing compassion fatigue seminars in uh, Lauderdale for AIDS caseworkers one time. And the, the seminar starts at nine, and I like to get there about eight, you know, to get kind of set up and relax and enjoy people coming in the door. Well, we were leaving the, the, our little condo down there, and doggone uh, phone rang. 
and it was a long conversation. Now, if we just drive like a maniac, we'll just make it to the seminar on time. We're zipping across Lauderdale, and the bridge goes up. Now, I'm stuck in the car with the bridge up, and I know I'm going to be late. Now, I have the choice to sit there and get completely frustrated and anxious and angry, or it can change the value. In this case, let me see if I can enjoy being late today. Let me see how with the reactions of people. See who winds up being friendly and saying, that's okay, other people being miffed, right? The point being, being late was the value that I had, like, I don't like being late, I don't want to be late. Or like, well, hold on, let me just change the value of being late to let me enjoy the experience and see what I can learn from it. Are you with me? In therapy, we call this reframing. But really is the awareness that nothing I see has any value. What's even more difficult to grasp is none of the experiences in my life have any intrinsic value either. They're just experiences. I might label them bad, label them good, or label them whatever, but all of them were just passing experiences that come in, go past, and disappear. None of the things that I have done in my life have been good or bad. They've just been experiences. And I can label them, and then I'll respond to the value I assign them. But I also, with some skill, can assign them different values, different lessons, right? Different um, um, Broken home, father alcoholic, that kind of thing in my early life. And doggone it, I was involved in a real altercation with him when I was about six or seven, and we wind up moving. <coughs> well, later on, all the anger that I had towards my father, I took out in baseball and wound up being a professional baseball player. Was that experience with my father good or bad? Huh? No, it was just an experience that was part of my integration of how all this life happens. But good or bad, no. Truly, and this is the tough part, is to notice these experiences are just experiences. With some skill, I can learn to assign them different types of value that are more useful than the values I may have placed on them out of habit or out of a, a memory or out of a trauma as opposed to out of a learning experience. In review, two powers of mind. The mind can give attention and withdraw attention, right? Got that one, that's pretty simple. The tough one is noticing nothing I see has value, none of my experiences have value, I assign the value. The value is in here. It's not outside of me. Nothing outside of me has that power without my permission. I am the one who assigns a value, right? I take responsibility for assigning value that's more congruent with uh, reality, and I'm also assigning it value that I can learn to, uh, from it to provide my life a new balance, a new growth experience. But essentially, the value is in here and in here. It's not out there. But that takes a little thought, a little practice. But to notice, as you realize, I have a mind to use, but I'm not my mind, and sometimes just beats on me out of habit or out of conditioning of, of how I was raised or the location where I grew up all those things, are things, all those kind of things that kind of uh, jam us up out of habit, I can begin to go back and redesign that, look at it differently, re-evaluate, essentially re-value the experience to bring it forward to today, what did I learn from that? What can I use to grow from that experience, right? And change the value of the experience to make it one that's useful for you. You don't have to go with all the patterns from the past. Those are all values you gave unconsciously, perhaps. Well, as you get skilled at this, let me go back and evaluate them and put values on them that might be more useful. Easy? Nope. Doable? 
Absolutely. But it's a mind boggler. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the show. Next week, we'll cover some other topics that might be really fascinating for you, I hope. But meanwhile, today, take care of yourself and see if you can help somebody else today. Be kind to somebody. And I'll see you next week. Thanks.